Hello everyone and welcome to this video from Inspire Cows. My name is Mike Steele and I'm the dairy coach from Inspire Cows. And today I'd like to talk to you about one of the most important graphs that I ever get on any dairy. This graph is the foundation of all profitability on any dairy. It connects with how profits are made. It connects with how your business does. It connects with all of the management things that you can do on any dairy. So this is whether it's heat abatement, staffing, labor efficiencies, you name it, anything you do, if it's going to show profit, will be linked to the amount of milk that you get from the dairy. So this graph, when you plot it, is yield on the y-axis by days in milk on the x-axis. You can get this from any dairy software. You can even plot it yourself. And it results in a scatter plot, which one point represents one cow, and it's a snapshot in time. Now when you do this, I recommend that you filter it down to close to 305 days for days in milk because the cows that are yielding beyond 305 are the further they go, um, the less relevant it is becoming because those cows are going to be the ones that uh, got sick or they had something wrong with their reproduction or something happened to give them that elongated lactation curve. So let's make it representative of most of the cows in your herd and filter it down to 305 days. Now what you'll notice as the result is the lactation curve of your herd. It will be quite scattered but you'll see it start at a certain point, rise up to around uh, 50 to 80 days in milk, and then from day 100 it would start to tail off until it gets to 305 days. And this is a profile of your lactation curve. Now you can make this into two versions of this graph by filtering it to just the first lactation animals as well. Because these ones will peak at around two thirds of the peak of the older cows. So it's good to get one lactation curve for the first lactation animals and one lactation curve for the older animals. Now, what you will notice is that the scattering can be quite a wide range. So you can see there are some cows that are achieving 50 litres plus and there are other cows that are achieving 20 litres or even below. Now this is extremely interesting to me as a dairy advisor. Now this is especially important when you filter it down to cows of the same group, say multiparous or primiparous an animals. And if we look at the primiparous animals or just the multiparous animals, what you will find is that you'll have animals that are in the same herd with very similar genetics, in the same building, under the same management, at the same days in milk, where some are achieving very high literage and others are achieving very low. Now, why is that? It could be any reason whatsoever. This could be heat stress. It may be uh, feed access problems. It may be social problems, social behavior problems. It may be flooring, lameness, anything on your herd. But something is causing that wide scatter. And this is affecting your profitability. Now, your nutritionist will want to increase the average fit line. So we can put a fit line in and we can see the average lactation curve. 
And if you increase that, then what you're doing is increasing the amount of TMR that you're giving to the cows to increase the amount of milk they're giving, which is fine, but it's not increasing profits, it's just increasing yield. What I want to do as an advisor is not to push the whole lot up, it's to make the scatter less, because this makes it more profitable by increasing efficiencies. I don't really mind if the higher yielding animals come down a little bit, but what I do want to do is fix the problems that making the low yielding animals yield that low amount. So if I make that whole scatter plot narrower, then I can make it far more efficient milk and therefore more profitable. Now, the reason why I separated the first lactation animals is because something interesting happens here. Now, when you do the fit line for the first lactation animals, you'll notice it's a lot flatter. Of course, it peaks at two thirds of the mul multiparous animals, but the whole thing is flatter. And a very interesting thing happens at somewhere between day 150 and day 180. And this happens in most herds. And what this thing is, is that the first lactation animals, on average, overtake the multiparous animals. So they're actually yielding more milk than the multiparous animals towards the end of their lactation. So what we do know is that when a cow finishes her lactation at a slightly higher yield, she is far more likely, as long as transition management is good, she is far more likely to give more milk in the following lactation. So she will be a more profitable animal. And the gap between, after that day 150, the gap between the first lactation and the multiparous animals is called first lactation persistency. And all of this is marginal milk. It is far more profitable milk because what it's doing is it's pushing your yield above the TMR average target. Now I have another video that explains marginal milk and the benefits of pushing your yield above your TMR average and it's perfectly possible to do with interventions that reduce disease, reduce lameness, reduce mastitis, increase your cow cooling abilities. Anything that you do to improve your dairy will give you more marginal milk. Now this first lactation persistency is the benefits you get from young stock man management. So if you achieve higher birth weights from better genetics, if you achieve better pre-wean growth rates, that's linked to higher lactations in the first lactation. If you achieve target service weights, then that is linked to better yield in the first lactation and more lactation persistency. Now this is all more profitable milk than the average litre that's going into the tank. So that is why this graph is the most important one to get on any dairy. It's how you can measure your profitability and how you can measure the efficiencies from your interventions. So please give it a go today, print off that graph and have a look at the scatter on your dairy. And if you do see a lot of scatter, then it's very much worth talking to your vet and your nutritionist and your geneticist and getting them together to talk about how you can improve the efficiencies on your dairy. Thank you very much for listening. My name's Mike Steele and this is Inspire Cows, the channel dedicated to dairy health. So if you like this video, please click below, remember to subscribe and to click on the bell notification so that when a new video comes up, 
you can be the first to know. See you next time.